Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and I'm delighted to be joined by Frank Smith with his fantastic web series, Open To It. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at the clip. Let's set some ground rules. Make sure we're always on the same page. Like the Obama. always told me life is a parade. I just want you to have all the hot gay sex that you were denied in college. Um, Frank, I am so delighted that you brought your film to us. Thank you for joining us in this wonderful virtual energy we have right here. Yes. 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 We're being recorded. I didn't leave meeting when I had the option. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, thanks so much for bringing your film. I honestly thought it was great writing. You had fantastic actors, of course. Um, and I just think it's a great series. And I honestly wanted to watch the entire series after the first episode. Um, you gifted us by giving us the first episode, which did leave us all wanting more. And it was an honor to have your film with us in person at the new Filmmakers LA event. So thank you very much. No, thank you. It was honestly the best crowd response we've had of any festival we've played at. So it was extremely memorable and enjoyable. We love to hear that. Thank you. Well, um, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Yes, sure. So Open To It is about a gay couple that's experimenting with opening their relationship for the first time and the silly, sexy situations that arise from that. Because um, I'd seen a lot of, especially in the gay web series world, shows that portray non-monogamy as a very sad heavy thing and I was like mm, let's not do that so it starts as these two guys just kind of like exploring what being open means to them and turns into this whole treatise throughout the series on like what open in a couple is it can be anything from you know having these fanciful orgies to like just like you know maybe tying each other up after you read 50 shades of gray but as long as couples are consenting and communicating all forms of relationship are valid that's sort of the show's main thesis I, I honestly lo I, I love this couple that you that you created for us because they were they were so just just lovely they just had each other's hearts and like you said you did it in a really like positive light you know normally we haven't really seen it in the context where it's you know it's kind of a, a rough ride but there you could tell there's a lot of love for each other they were there for each other but what I didn't expect was quite the episode that you took us into because it was no hysterical but at the same time i think i stopped breathing because i was so like oh no this is so hard to watch this is kind of cringy um you know and i i mean i just I've, I've constantly got the vision of him sitting down in the shower for the rest of my life now because i'm just like that what an awful moment anyways that being said well done on all the comedy comedic timing characters everything um where did the inspiration come for you and saying i want to turn this into a web series Thank you. And I will say there will be rough rides, just not in the way you're thinking. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I think the main inspiration was wanting to present this very different take, especially like being a gay man in LA, you encounter many a person in an open relationship and like plenty of people are able to make it work because they have their boundaries, they have their rules, but that doesn't mean that fun chaos doesn't ensue. And you're actually reminding me just now the image of Cam sitting sadly in the shower is actually not taken from a personal experience in that way. But what did happen was I was in LA fitness one time working out and they have like open shower curtains. And I noticed as I was getting into a shower, a guy who was just sitting naked in the shower staring into the distance and i couldn't get that out of my head i was like what is going on with that guy that he's just sitting on a dirty shower drain staring off like some there's a story there and that was sort of the image i was replicating i mean that all happens at la fitness is the next one for you wow that's <laughs> yeah la fitness is is a wild scene you see many yeah. sad silly sexy people <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So, well, listen, I, I, I love that. And, and again, it's a different thing from obviously, you know, making it, thinking about it and then turn it into a series. Did you kind of always know as opposed to a short film or a feature film, maybe that's coming? Did you always know you wanted to have a series of this coming up? No, that's a great question. When I first came up with it, it was just episode one as a short film. Um, and I think I like had series ambitions for it, but what was my hang up for the longest time was that I'd envisioned the show as sort of like a, a single guy going to being monogamous and then opening up his relationship with his partner. And the more I thought on it, the more I was like, that's not really the show I want to tell. Like the, the funniest situations were coming from like when they were open and encountering like weird fun people. And so over time I just realized, okay, I think like 
they have to start by like already being open. It can be their first entree into that, but like, I don't wanna see him single and it's just taking too long to get to where the show wants to live. And how did it work? Because obviously, you know, there's, I mean, I, I, I'm sure, you know, obviously these kind of scenes, you know, that they, they can be fun. I mean, there's a lot of comedy in, in these scenes, obviously, but there's, you know, and I think one thing I really actually appreciate, Frank, is you kind of didn't shy away from anything, which I think is refreshing. Um, I think honestly, we need to kind of see that on camera, see the beautiful experiences and just like not make anything, these kind of things taboo. So I was, I was so glad that you did that as a, as a gay person myself. So, you know, really well done for doing that. What did you kind of know how you want it to look and feel? You got great characters, commute time in, tell us a little bit about the casting process and deciding what you wanted to do and partake in that. And also, um, how you, how you direct a scene and how you directed the, the episode. Yeah, I think um, with casting, I hadn't done a short film in a while as an actor. So what I knew I wanted going into it was like for the people to have really good chemistry with me. Cause I was like, okay, I am worried about being a little rusty. So I want to make sure like I'm really clicking with the people I'm playing with. So they're bringing out the best in me and you know, hopefully I in them. Um, and I really got that, especially from Tim Wardell who plays my boyfriend. Like he, yeah. in, in the audition, it was just so easy with him. I felt like I kept like making unexpected choices just because of what he was giving me. And I was like, this feels so comfortable and easy already. So that was great. Um, and Jason Casalias who plays Princeton. <laughs> I mean, he was the first one at the callback and we were, it was interesting because we wanted to like put the actors in like close range situations just to test our chemistry without asking anyone to do too much in an audition. So at first we were like, what we came up with was like, okay, we're just going to sit close face to face if that's okay with you and do the lines. And Jason was like, can I sit on your lap? I practice sitting on your lap. And I was like, he's got the part. I mean, like, he just like. And I was like, you really don't have to. He was like, no, it won't work as well, trust me. And the way he just like took charge, I was like, this is Princeton 101 of like, no, I'm in charge the minute I step into the room. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Cause that dynamic was was so was so good. Cause I mean, I think like the fact that he sort of came in and just, you know, was more confident than the actual couple deciding to kind of do it, which is really, really good. Well, well done for that. How is I always wonder how is it when you're playing behind camera, you're in front of camera. You wrote the show. How is that dynamic? Was there any kind of challenges in that respect? I think what the good experience I had had in a few of the shorts I did when I first moved out here was I acted and wrote in them as well. And what I kind of took stock of was that when I was like trying to play with the writing and act and produce actively, that was feeling like a few too many jobs for me at the same time. So I was working with producers where I was very like, uh, optimistic with them and like I hope you can handle everything because I want to like release the producing duties and really like be focused on the acting and they you know really listened to me on that and I really appreciated them um for the help they gave there and you know then after that it was just being in a scene and I act I consciously decided like I didn't want to direct these first three episodes I was like I want someone else to have an outside eye so I really can immerse myself and we hired this guy Greg Wolf who like is now a really good friend, which is, you know, all the better because he Aww. was so conscious of like making sure everyone felt comfortable and especially that like I was happy with what's going on because especially when you're writing and producing it, it's easy to like pay a little too much attention to what everybody else is doing and then not be in it. And so he was very good at being like, you know, sometimes making it even very high stakes, like the scene in the bathroom, he was like, it's late. We need to let everyone go home. You have to get this right this time. And I was like, ah, okay, but like we got it in one take. So, uh, you know, appropriate pressure. That's a, no, that's amazing. And, and, and well done, well done to you as well. Um, you know, looking back on it, like, I mean, I, I, I think like I was looking back and I was like, oh, I want to watch the next episode. Like it's very watchable. Like the way you've got the comedic timing, the writing was so good. Uh, chemistry is so good. I really believed in the fact that you made this couple and it was just a very interesting dynamic. And I already kind of like felt invested in the characters. So did you kind of know how many episodes, how many episodes you plan to do? What's the kind of next steps with the series? Yeah. So what I decided was that like the first episode, uh, I felt what you did. I was like, there's not enough. I want to see more of them. So I wrote it as a three episode arc because that's what I felt like I was able to produce at the time. And then I was connected to a producer, Africa Janae through a friend um, who was like, so what's next? And she was the first one where I was like, oh, I guess I need to come up with more, don't I? So um, I came up with episodes four through eight. 
because of my conversation with her. And we filmed episodes four through six in May. So uh, one through six will constitute uh, season one of the show. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, it, it's it's been really special just bringing everyone back together. Like, um, and you know, when you're making a series, obviously there are moments where you're like, oh, this is a lot of work. Oh, this is hard. But like some of my best memories of the show I was realizing have happened in the past few months. Like New Filmmakers was amazing having people so hooked in and like the way they were laughing, but also like sighing and awing. I was just like, boy, they are really connected to this couple right now. And that was so gratifying. Like the table read for four through six was just, everyone was laughing hysterically. And one of the actors, especially, she brought in like props for her character that really just brought the house down. And uh, yeah, and then finally just like shooting four through six, I directed for the first time I directed episode four and like acting and directing really was a new thing for me, but I so yeah. fell right into it and really enjoyed it. And I'm really happy with how the episode has turned out so far. So yeah, I just think on that and I'm like the best is yet to come. That's fantastic. Well, well done, well done you. And you really, I mean, you know, it's comedy is really hard. It's hard to write, it's hard to act, it's hard to direct. So, you know, well done. I'm glad that you found, uh, you know, your friend and to kind of continue this series going on as well. Looking back at this, I mean, you did get all interaction. Like I, I'm a bit new filmmakers and I heard all those ums and ors and laughs and everything. And yeah. that was still, obviously, as you said, very gratifying. I'm just curious, like, you know, have, what have you, um, obviously reaction has been very, it was very, very good. What did you kind of want your audience to take from your, from your series? That's a great question. I think what I wanted people to take away was that you can laugh at the silliness, but also be behind these characters. I wanted people to really care about them and want to see them succeed. Like when the project was still in script phase, I showed it to a really good friend who read it and was like, oh, I love seeing a couple at the beginning of the end like this. And I was like, no, 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 no. That is explicitly not what I'm going for. So when I hear people like live reacting and caring, it reaffirms what I'm trying to put out there that like there are other permutations of this relationship yeah. style that it doesn't have to end in doom and disaster. Or at least if, if there is disaster, it can be funny disaster. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you, and you definitely gave a great take on that as well. So obviously, you have made more episodes. That's great. Is there anywhere where we can continue to watch them? Or are they under, under disclosed right now? Where do we find more of the open to it? They are um, disclosed for just a few more months while we wait for our last few film festival results. So if people go to opentoitseries.com and sign up for the newsletter, they will hear first when it is coming out. But I can promise the first three are coming out this fall. And I'm really looking forward to sharing them with more than just the film festival world because I'm really happy with the responses we've gotten. And I want the public at large to experience them. And yeah, so hear sign, up, sign up. And you've got fans, so they're, they're, they're going to be waiting. So, you know, we're looking forward to when it drops. Um, and obviously, you know, extension to that, what other things you plan to work on? What's kind of happening for you, Frank? Yeah, so I mentioned this when I was um, at New Filmmakers. I'm in the beginning of stages of financing a feature film called Second Generation. It's a family drama about an Indian American family. And uh, we have a director attached, this woman, um, Shar Ray, who's just very like, I don't know. She's just a go-getter and just like very sweet. And you love like working with people like that who are like, so what are we doing next? What are we doing next? She's just on top of it. Um, a really good friend of mine, Omar Muscati, is attached as a lead actor and he's was just uh, a lead on a CBS drama. And um, yeah, so it's, you know, that's what you need. You just put more of the chess pieces in place and suddenly people are like, here's a little money, here's a little money. I mean, I'm learning a lot because financing a feature is obviously way harder than financing a web series, but that's, I mean, honestly, between episodes one through six, we have made 90 minutes of content. We have basically made a feature. So I'm like, I'm ready. Let's do it. Game on. You are ready. Come on. You are ready. And, and, and this is very exciting. Well, congratulations on that. I mean, it seems like you've got a great team with you. So that's half the battle anyway. Um, just to close up on, now you've made this entire series, going into your next feature. Is there any kind of, to our filmmaking, was there any advice that you have that you can kind of share that just kind of keeps you going in your everyday life? Things you may have heard or, you know, multi-million dollar answers. I don't know. Have a supportive partner is tip number one, um, whether romantic or professional or both. My boyfriend, Matt Hartman, has been so wonderful during this whole process. It really started with him just like kind of casually contributing, but then everyone just found him so indispensable. He did everything from being like the art director and making our house 
look like uh, Tim's in my house, which meant sort of removing all pictures of himself and erasing his existence from the home, which was a very <laughs> funny, surreal thing. Um, and then he directed episode five, and I'm really, really happy with how his episode turned out. And he's also going to be doing his own short this fall because he was like, oh, well, I got to like work out the kinks on your show, and now I get to do my own thing. Um, oh, wow. And I think going along with that is just like, it is okay to be clear on what you want. Like I've found that I work really well with people who are enthusiastic about the idea and understand what I'm going for. We of course have our collaborators who like are just very efficient and can get through it in a very like, you know, effective, impressive way. But I think um, sometimes when you're starting out as a new filmmaker, you think I kind of just have to take the first yes I get. And you don't, if you're not feeling super connected to someone you're working with, you can hold out or like, or thinking of hiring, you can hold out for those people who are going to bring the joy and the excitement and the drive to the project. It's been so special because when I like walk into a room, walk on set, like the mood is infectious and that wouldn't have happened had I not like, you know, just kept orienting towards people who were bringing those uh, great feelings to the room. That's amazing. And you're, you, you can't underestimate that your team is everything creating a, a family there together to work together so i think absolutely you want to have that well listen Frank, i'm so glad that you brought your film to new filmmakers thank you for making us laugh out loud and going to these characters well acted as well i wanted to mention that you did a great job um and just can just keep making more movies for us we want more and more and more of frank and <laughs> obviously we've got a power couple there so keep hashing out those movies so i hope we'll get your boyfriend's movies as well so that'd be great Yes, everyone go through our credits list, hire everyone. Nasha Schreiner, our cinematographer, amazing, hilarious. Our other actors like Elizabeth Boone and Kimberly Nieva, Todd the End. Like, and obviously we have drag queens. We have Laganja Strange. In future episodes, we have Manila Luzon, Pandora Box, Honey Davenport, Matt Rivera. Just hire them all, please. Nothing would make me happier. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I love it. What a team, what a team. Well, thank you so much. Welcome to our new filmmakers, LA family. We'd love to have you part of it and we can't wait to see more of your projects. So thank you so much, Frank. Thank you, and I'm a member. I can't wait to keep watching people's films. It's always a fun time. Yay, fantastic.